what's going on everybody welcome back to adobe's learn from the pro series my name is max novak in episode one i taught you guys the essential setup for creating a lot of these music video-esque visual effects using the roto brush tool to isolate our subject and our background now we're going to dive into what you can do with this setup to spice up your videos add a little bit of smooth motion so let's hop into adobe after effects and get right into it so what i'm going to do off the start here is let's delete this shape layer that i used just to show you uh, how we can place things behind our subject with the rotoscoping we'll delete that for now we're going to come back to that in the next episode what I want to set up is some simple little transitions. So let's start off simple here. What I'm going to do is right click down in this gray space and I'm going to go to new and I'm going to create an adjustment layer. So on this adjustment layer, we can place any effects and the effects will be applied to everything beneath it. So let's create a simple little zoom here. I'm going to go to my effects and presets over on the right and search for the transform effect. So let's place that transform effect onto our adjustment layer. And then with that transform effect in our effect controls in the top left, all we need to do is start our cursor here at the beginning of our footage or wherever you'd like to start your zoom. And then in our effect controls again, let's go ahead and just click on these little stopwatches that'll toggle the animation. It'll create a keyframe, which allows us to transform the video in any way we'd like. So let's scroll a little bit on the timeline here. And once we've scrolled, let's go ahead and just grab the scale and our effect controls and just crank that up. And let's also take the position and move that over to the left so that that's a little bit more centered. If we open up the adjustment layer, open up effects and transform, you guys are going to see what we're talking about here with those keyframes. So if you pay attention to the values, you'll see that the scale starts at 100. And as we move along here, you're going to see how that goes up and it ends at the values that we specified. So what you get as the result, if we click play here, is a simple little zoom. Now the cool thing about this, you can grab these keyframes. If you want the zoom to be faster, you move them in, you're gonna have a lot faster of a zoom. Let's breathe some life into this and add some motion blur. All you need to do to enable motion blur, make sure you're clicking this toggle switches and modes button in the bottom left until you can see these switches. Go ahead and turn on the motion blur switch or all of these layers. And then you'll see as a result, once we've done that, it should enable motion blur in the composition. If you're not seeing that enabled, just make sure you check that on as well. But now when we go through our zoom, it's gonna add some of this realistic motion blur. And if you don't see what I'm talking about, you guys can go up to composition, composition settings. And if you click over to the advanced tab, you can take this shutter angle here and just crank that up. That's going to increase the amount of blur. So you can raise the shutter angle, but you can also increase the speed. So again, if I take those keyframes and make that zoom a lot faster just by dragging that in with my increased shutter angle and the increased velocity of that zoom, you're going to have this super blurry zoom in that looks a lot more realistic. It kind of reminds me of those Tarantino-esque, the super high motion blur. You can use those keyframes in your transform to make any adjustment and add the motion blur just like that. So that is the basics of using your motion blur. Again, very easy. Let's take it a step further here and go over to our rotoscoped clip that we set up in episode one. What we're gonna do is select that layer and we're gonna click control D to duplicate it. So with that duplication, let's go ahead and right click on that and we're gonna rename that to clone. Now the best way to think about this, the best way that I visualize it is by thinking of these layers as a sandwich. So if we take our clone and we just move that over a little bit, now you can see what we're talking about. Now thinking of those layers like a sandwich once more, if you take that clone layer and you place it beneath our original roto layer, check out what happens here. The clone layer goes behind our original and that's how we can manipulate essentially what's in the front, what's in the back, just by easily changing the layer structure. Let's go back over to our clone layer here and start opening up these triangles to show our transform options. And for now, let's go ahead and just click reset next to transform. So everything goes back to normal. Start at the beginning or wherever you'd like the effect to start. Go ahead and toggle the animation on. You can even just click and drag down. Now let's drag a bit, maybe to where the zoom ends, right about there. And let's take our position and just move that over to the left. So it looks pretty cool. And with that motion blur that we set up, it's not just gonna shift from behind, it's really gonna have some motion blur and react to the speed and the velocity of everything you're setting up there. So let's look at that without the motion blur. Everything's a lot more stale. You can see those edges coming out a little bit more with the motion blur on. I think it works perfect for dance type videos like this, any type of video with high energy. So we're almost finished here. Let's just add a couple more keyframes just to keep changing around the motion. So back up in our adjustment layer, we'll open that up until we're back in our transform. Let's drag to where he sort of cocks his head back. 
And right before he does, we're going to go ahead and set another keyframe. So just click these buttons here next to scale position anchor point and then drag a little bit to the point of contact here. And we're just going to keyframe again. And this time click reset. Let's do the exact same thing to our clone layer here. So right before he kind of cocks his head back, what we're going to do is again, set our keyframes at that position, move over a couple of frames and then just click reset. And there you guys go. Swivels follows the motion. In my opinion, one of the best things to know as an editor is being able to edit to the music, follow the beat, have the visual match the song. And this is one of those effects and one of those techniques that can really help you breathe a lot of life into stale footage. So hope you guys did enjoy. In my opinion, one of the most essential skills to know as an editor is matching the audio with the visual. And this tutorial is one of those tools that can really help you with that by adding smooth motion, having full control over the movement of the scene. So if you did enjoy, slap like on the video. If you'd like to see more from me, my channel name on YouTube is Max Novak and my Instagram is underscore Max Novak. In part three, we're going to dive into adding things behind your subject. If you're interested, the playlist should be to my right. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.